Hello everyone, welcome back to Jack Scraps and thank you for joining me today for part two of our exploding doghouse tutorial. And if you happen to miss part one, I will have that link down below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Now to save some time on filming and your time as well, I went ahead and laid everything out and glued it down, but I'd like to walk you through what I did. So these sections are about four by four inches. What I did was I printed off some of the digital sheets and then I cut them down to be three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. So all of these big blocks are that measurement. The two smaller ones, these are one and nine sixteenths, or you could go to one and a half by three and three fourths. So I laid all those down and I used score tape. I had this green decorative trim from Target and I added it to the bottom of all of the squares because it makes it look like grass. So here it is if you bring everything up on the front and it just kind of looks like grass and I kind of liked it. So that is felt decorative trim and I think it looks really cool there. It gives it some nice texture. For these three blocks here and the two smaller ones, I use Calico Collage and this is from a, another digital kit that I use and it is pink wood, which I thought looked really well with the flowers. The next thing I did was printed out a uh, banner here from Cricut. So I thought happy was a nice positive word to put there and it could also be the dog's name if you wanted. <laughs> so on the end, I added them little, those little sticker hearts from Bo Bunny and I actually had to create this banner in uh, Cricut. It was a solid banner. And then I added each individual letter to each little flag and then welded that. No, I sliced it so that it would come through. And let's see, I think that is it for the outs. Oh, the little hole. So I also cut this out in Cricut. There is a dog house there that has a front and a hole that it cuts out. Um, but you could easily do this if you cut your paper three and seven fourths, no, three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths, and then your hole would be, it's actually one and nine sixteenths. Again, you could do one and a half by one and three fourths. Now, you would definitely want to make your um, little doorway here big enough for the dog that you're putting in there or what other animal you might be using. <laughs> Okay, so that is the outside of the exploding box. So when we turn this over, I still have the front here toward me, and I put a, a nice uh, decorative piece from uh, the digital kit of Calico Collage, and each of these images are from there as well. Now, what I like about these images is it has a nice grid paper, and then it has little dog prints on it. Really cute. Hope you can see that but I wanted something uh, faint in the background because I'm going to be building on top of this. So um, that's how I did that. Again, I cut it down to three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. But the next step would be to glue down our little pocket here. So I'm just gonna add some wet adhesive along the bottom and up one side. Now the important thing when working on an exploding box is to make sure you have everything in the right direction. So when I add these pieces, I have to think that it's kind of, you would be looking at it kind of like this. So um, you just have to be careful on the direction. Okay, let's do the same for this one. Okay, now we have two little pockets and I actually printed out here's the page that I printed out from the digital kit of Calico Collage and um, I'm going to use these cute little note they look like little note pages and I'm going to stick those in there 
maybe with some other things, but those are so cute. Okay, so I've cut those um, images out of that sheet that I showed you, and I created these really cute little booklets. I am loving these. Um, it's funny, you know, I just started in one direction and ended up somewhere else. You got to go with it, right? So what I did was I cut it out. I cut out those note cards. When I added them to the pocket, they kind of just blended in with the background. See, here's an example. See, it just blends in. So I thought, well, I need to put something behind it. So I printed some more of that pink wood paper. This is six and a half by three and a fourth, and then I scored it at three and a fourth. And it was the perfect size to put this three by three note card on there. Now then, in the kit, you know, she had a really long uh, dog bone and paw, uh, like a washi tape, if you will. So I added that to the top of each card. And then I thought, oh, well, I left it so that you could tuck things under there, but if nothing's there, nobody's going to know. So she had these lovely little stamps. She makes the best stamps, I must say, in her digital kits. So these are so adorable. Look at that little dog. So cute. So I thought, oh, those would be perfect to just tuck up under there. I love his little face. He's so cute. <laughs> And so I did that on both of these. And I just love how that turned out. And then when you open it up, I did put an another piece of the paw print uh, paper there on both of them. So you could write here and add a picture here or however you would want to do that. But I really love how these little photo booklets turned out. So we're just gonna tuck those under there. So now we need to move on to one of the two sides that doesn't have anything. Well, I decided to do like a waterfall and I was going to put it on the back of the front um, panel here, but I changed my mind and I'm going to put it on the opposite one. So what I've done, I actually started to put this together and then I realized I wasn't filming. <laughs> So to create a waterfall, what you need for this size, what I'm doing, and of course you could do whatever you like, um, but I'm doing one that is seven and an eighth inches long. You and it is two and a half inches wide. You fold that in half and you score. And then you score every fourth of an inch. So it would be this way, actually. Put it in your scoreboard, score it in half. And then to the right, you're going to score every fourth of an inch. Now, the first thing I had to do was figure out how many um, little panels that I wanted. And how I did that was to figure out the size of each panel or each photo mat, let's see. So I decided to do two and a half because if you want to do an instat, it would fit there really good. You'd have a little border. So once I figured that out, two and a half, then I went every fourth of an inch considering the width of my panel here. So at two and a half, I could go to one was two and three fourths, two was three, three was three and a fourth, four was three and a half, and then you go one more, and that would be three and three fourths. So that would fit perfect on here. So I knew I needed to make five score marks, the center one, and then I counted a fourth of an inch over each time. I hope that makes sense. I'm sure you've seen lots of videos on how to create these. So now that I have this piece done, then what I did was I took each panel and glued within the fourth of an inch score marks. So there was a line here and here. I put the glue in the center and added my panel, what I have here. And I did that for each one. You only glue, you only glue here in the center. 
if you want me to do a separate video on that, I certainly can, but I've already gone and done this. So now, um, the next thing I'm going to do is we fold this over. You take another long piece of cardstock and this will measure one inch across by six inches. And you will take this piece, put it behind the base and then take the other part of the base, fold that over, and then fold these over and just kind of push those down. What's going to happen is this is going to get glued down to the bottom. But before we do that, on this piece, I'm using just a little piece of ribbon here. I got this from the Dollar Tree. It's gross grain with metallic stripe from Floral Garden. I'm going to glue that here onto the back piece. Hopefully centering it. <laughs> so we'll glue this here in the center. You can use a skinnier piece, whatever you like. This is going to be the pull mechanism. And then to make sure it's sturdy, we're going to add another piece. And I've taken this recommendation from Sam and I'll put her information here on the screen. She is from Mixed Up Crafts, very talented. And then we're going to put this on top just give it a little bit more strength. So first let's go through and bend all of these to kind of train them. We're going to take our little strip here and add some adhesive to the inside. Now another trick that she does is she glues the last piece down to the mechanism and then that way it also provides additional strength to it. So we're going to give this a go. I've not done a waterfall this way before so we'll see how that works. Okay, now when we get ready to adhere this down, we need to glue these little flaps. And when you do, you want to do it where they don't get adhered to the base of the mechanism here. So I am going to put a little glue right here, just so that these two are kind of glued together, but not to the bottom. So see, you could still put your paper through. Okay. And then we can add our glue to the top of that. And we're going to lay this down and see how it works. That looks about right. It's so thick right there. Okay, let's give it a go. And it works. Why don't these come apart there? There we go. Just got to work with it a little bit to get it to go. <laughs> okay, fabulous. On to the next one. For this section, what I've decided to do was put down a different piece. So I removed the other one that was there and I'm going to do um, a little bit of a layered flip and I'm using these cute little squares that were in the digital kit of these dogs with flowers. So adorable. And what I've done is I've used the um, pieces of cardstock that we had when we cut these corners out. I've used these remnants 
I took the image, glued it on to one side or wherever I needed it to be, and then I cut about a half an inch off, and then that became my hinge like this. So this little piece here would get tucked underneath the larger image and then it becomes a flip. And what I've done here is just added some more of that grid paper so that you could write here or add a photo, whatever you like. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of glue these on to this, the back side of this paper and then this whole thing will get glued down. Now you put the glue here on the inside, put it here wherever you want it, and the way I'm doing it is kind of staggering them. They're not gonna be you know, perpendicular to each other or in alignment. So you just wanna make sure you get this all the way tucked in there. Don't get any glue on um, where the joint is for the hinge. Okay. Let's do the next one here. So I'm tucking it all the way up and then pushing down on the little hinge. So that is how it looks when I have them all attached and then it will be glued down like so. Now if you wanted to you could add some ribbon and tie it off in the center to keep these little flaps down. I thought about doing that. I just need to get a wide enough piece to do that. Another way to do it is you could put a magnet on the inside under this top layer here and on the back side here and then put that down and have a magnet closure. Or don't do a closure at all because we will have you know another piece there on top and it will lay over on it which will kind of keep it down also once everything is opened, of course. This seems to lay pretty flat, so I think I've decided to not use ribbon. Now that we've finished this, we have completed all of the components for the base layer. And next we would work on the second layer that I'm using. Now I've gone ahead and saved some time for all of you and did some decorating already and I kind of mirrored what I did on the first layer. So the big blocks will be three and three eighths by three and three eighths. And that would be on all four of these. I did go ahead and add some of that ribbon. Like I said, I just mirrored what I did before. Here's the little doggy that I put in there. And on the inside, these would be three and three eighths as well. And then these smaller pieces would be three and three eighths by one and three eighths wide. So that's how you would do the two pockets. Okay, for the two pockets, what I've done is cut down these two little note cards that were in the kit. They were actually about a little bit longer than that. And put these in the little pockets for journaling. And then I added these little dog stamps to each of the pockets. These are so cute, really pretty. And now we're going to work on this side of the, this layer. Now, when I was trying to figure out 
the direction to put the items that I'm adding here and then later on here, I went back to look at YouTube and some of the videos on the exploding boxes and quite frankly, they go all different directions. Um, most of them, when they are adding items to the pockets, they add them to go toward the center. So as you see, this is facing toward this way, this is facing this way, so this one would face this way, whatever it is, and this one inward. But then I've also seen them where they're this way, and this way, and then this way, if you understand. Because like in this one, we did this to where it was facing us. These two, are, of course, the pockets are facing inward. But then when I did this one, I guess I was thinking that they would turn the box and then of course this would be in the right orientation, it's portrait. However, when you look at some of the other exploding boxes, you would actually see this turned around so that the pocket on this first piece that I created would be down here and you know it would just be upside down. So I think it's your preference, whatever direction you want to go in. Oh, and I added this piece later. It doesn't matter, it's going to get covered, but I did want to have that layered look there, so that's the only reason why I added that. So I say all that because it was taking me some time to figure out what direction I wanted to put this item in. What I'm doing is creating like a little gatefold door I cut this out of one of the digital papers. I thought it was so cute. And then I also cut out um, some more of the floral design and I made little hinges on them. So these are going to be um, glued to the back side of the puppy paper, like this. And these will close and they will make a door to the paper. What I'm going to have in the door is this cute little crossword puzzle or word search. This is a word search, I'm sorry. So this cute little thing will be in here on top of the puppy paper. That's why I wanted to create the doors so that you open it up. You have that as a surprise and then of course the puppy paper. <laughs> so I like this idea, but then I was thinking, how are you gonna close it? So in the digital kit also, there is a envelope, and on the envelope it says, the journey of life is sweeter if traveled with a dog. I really like that sentiment. I fussy cut it out, and then I fussy cut it out again using a little bit of a border around the words sentiment here with plain pink cardstock. What I did in between these two layers was add a magnet. So, on these doors, on one of them, I'm going to actually glue part of this sentiment down. This, the um, magnet is already here on the inside of that. And then on the back side of this, of this panel, I would put, you know, the other magnet and then it would be a magnetic flip open. So that's the idea and then of course I would put paper here on the inside to cover both of those. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this section and again I was just having a really hard time. It kind of stumped me on what direction I should put this um, before I was going to put it where the dogs would be facing outward. But the more I see everything, I think they should be facing inward. So you would just turn it a little bit and then you could see. I mean, you can still see it like this, but. Okay, I think I've rambled on long enough about that. <laughs> Let's get started on putting this down. Now I have gone ahead and added some adhesive tape to these pieces. The first thing I'm going to do is put the panels on here. Just gonna line these up and push it over there. There we go. 
So that's all aligned. And then we'll add this next one. And what I'm doing here is kind of just putting the door front even between the two ends and then I'm going to wrap this over and down. And then now our door is closed. Okay, now we're going to put a little glue on the back side of this. We will add it here. Okay, now time. Okay, so the magnet I just stuck down in there and it found the other one. I don't know if you can see down in there. Nope. Oh, right there. So, what I'm going to do is carefully. Open this up. We'll put a little glue Yeah, you can definitely hear Okay, now we can go ahead and add some tape to the back side of that. I always do that when I'm adding a magnet It just adds some more strength to it Okay, so I need to, I forgot to cut little panels here. I'll do that and be back. Now, I forgot to mention that um, these little doors is um, one and five eighths across here. And then I used a half an inch hinge. So if you go to try and create this, now you'll have the measurements. It's actually, to create the doors, I actually took this size, three and three eighths, cut it in half, and then you had your two doors. Added a half inch on both sides for the hinge. For this next panel, what we're going to do is take a piece of eight and a half by eleven black cardstock, if that's the color that you're using, and we're going to cut it down to be six and three fourths by six and three fourths. So you have a nice square. Next, what you'll need to do is bring out your scoreboard or your ruler and bone folder and we're going to score this in half at three and three eighths we're going to rotate it once to the left score at three and three eighths After that, what you need to do is take your point and put it at any number at the top of your scoreboard, and you're going to line up the bottom to be at that same score line. So we're using five, and hopefully we will have lined this up properly, and we're going to score. Yep. So what you're doing is creating a diagonal line Next thing we're going to do is fold this in half and burnish. Unfold and fold it in half again the other way and burnish. And now what we're going to do is lay this down and fold back on the diagonal line.
and burlesque. Okay, so I hope that you see that. Now this particular piece here will be the one that is glued down to our exploding box panel. I'm going to make an X on both sides. It'll be like this. And if you take the tip of the opposite block and try to fold that forward, you'll see that these two panels are going to bend inward. And then you push them down and burnish. And that will look like this, you know, like a little sandwich. <laughs> Okay, so I hope you understood that. You would be gluing that down. These panels will fold in, and this would be the top. And what we're going to do is use some ribbon to tie this down so that it doesn't just flap open like that. And we'll do some decorating. Now when you go to decorate this component, you're going to want to cut out squares that are three and a fourth by three and a fourth and of course you can modify that size if you want it to have a larger border on the outsides so i've already gone ahead and decorated this one with paper and i wanted to show you for the pieces that fold inward there's a particular way to cut those so you cut out your three and a fourth by three and a fourth square you put it into your cutter, you line up the points, top and bottom, on a diagonal line. You put one point at the edge of the cutter here, and then another one down at the bottom. So you kind of level those out, like this. Hopefully you can see that, and then you cut and then you will have your two pieces that go on the two squares that fold, okay? So, and I'm just using regular art glitter glue to put these down. And now our piece is done. So when you open it up, I put a little dog here in front of the dog house and I added a uh, little dog portrait here where it says, be the person your dog thinks you are. And you can actually tuck something in there like a photo if you wanted. And then it just closes up on, on the background. On the back side is really pretty with the music note and floral. Now that we have our component done, what we need to do is add some ribbon to the back of this before we place it down into our layer. I'm using Merchant 41 decorative trim and it's this really pretty pink and silver metallic. I've cut about an 18 inch piece. I think that will be enough. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add some ribbon here to the back. I've kind of measured out where it would be. I'm going to use Tombow Mono Liquid Glue. Um, I bought some Fabri-Tac and I can't remember where I put it, so I'm going to use this. <laughs> A little dab should do it. I'm going to bring this around, just make sure that my uh, two lengths here are even. And now we'll go ahead and uh, maybe I should try tying this first to make sure I have enough. I would still have time to put more on there. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good place to... Okay, now we can go ahead and put this down.
We'll center that here on our little flap and press. Okay, I'm gonna open this up and burnish a little bit more. Now that we had this component completed, I added a, another square in the middle to finish that off. And what we need to do at this point is add the top layer to our bottom one. Now the important thing to do is to make sure you have the bottom one in the correct direction. So this is the front. So this is the right direction for that. And this one, I have the little doggy here, and that is the correct direction as well. So I don't know if I can lay these over. Nope. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is bring these all up together and then center it here on the bottom. So that's going to be fun. Maybe if I centered one end and then put the other one down might be the best way. So I'm going to use glue, wet glue for this, just to make sure I have wiggle room. All right, here goes nothing. <laughs> So it's about a, almost a fourth of an inch on the top and bottom. Yeah, so it's about a fourth of an inch if you folded everything down to look at it. I think that's... It's about the best we can get it here. For the center, what I've done is printed off a, I think this is, think this is a hexagon box. And uh, before I printed it out in Cricut Design Space, I added a paw print and sliced that into the lid. And then it cut out the paw. And then I put some acetate. I just put some glue around the corners there and pushed it down in there. This is the bottom the back side and on the front I put that little doggy there so it just closes up and what's kind of cool is it does an exploding type of thing as well so that's fun and then I um, put two little velcro dots on the bottom so that if you give this to someone you know they could take it out um, if they wanted But there, that is super cute. I wanted one big um, Velcro dot, but I didn't have any. Okay. And then the lid just goes on like that. So this concludes the construction for the exploding box. Now we need to work on the lid.